Hi, my name is Britt. I'm a registered dietitian. Today we are going to make a cranberry sorbet. So first thing we need are cranberries. This is a 12 ounce bag of cranberries and we're just going to dump this right into a pot. Okay, they are rinsed, dried, ready to rock and roll. They are not organic. Cranberries are grown in like a bog, like a marshy area, usually in the Northeast. And they have a lot of properties that kind of protect them from the local insects and the fungus. However, you don't really need to buy them organic, or at least I don't think you need to buy them organic. So we're gonna make a Prosecco cranberry sorbet, because I thought that would be interesting. If you happen to have a leftover bottle of whatever, use that. Don't go out special and buy Prosecco for this. Prosecco is an Italian sparkling wine fermented in the Charmat, I don't know if I'm saying that right, method, which means they use tanks for their second fermentation. And then we're gonna add two cups. Ha, we're gonna wait for that fizz to settle down. Whoopsie. You don't have to use alcohol if you don't want to in this recipe. I just think it would be nice because we're trying to like come up with some like interesting holiday recipes that are not normal, that are super easy to do. This is gonna be two cups of Prosecco and one cup of water. If you don't wanna use an alcohol, good for you, that's fine. Don't use an alcohol. Use maybe one cup of orange juice and two cups of water. About three cups of liquid. I think orange juice would probably go really well. Three cups of water will do just fine. We're making a sorbet here. It's supposed to be light and fruity and palate cleansing and just not heavy and rich. And we have cranberries in that. We need one and a half cups of sugar. Oops, so this is one. Guess what's my one cup measure? The zest and juice of one lime. So this is a microplane. This is a lemon. Did I say lime? I meant lemon. And we're just gonna kind of just get the yellow part. I've read some recipes. Oh, oh my God, I dropped it in there. <laughs> okay, we're done. I dropped it in there. Nice. I also need the juice. And so you just hold your hand like that and you squeeze. And it sort of filters out all the seeds. But we're gonna actually, doesn't even matter. That's right, forget it. Just squeeze the lemon in there. I'll explain in a little bit. What else? Ah, caro syrup. This is corn syrup. It's because I'm making an ice cream. So you do need some special equipment for this recipe. You're gonna need a blender, a strainer, like a really fine mesh strainer, and you're gonna need an ice cream maker. So all of those things can be found on Amazon on those links below. Two tablespoons of this, and I'll explain why we need this particular ingredient. I will accept maple syrup, I will accept honey, and I will also accept agave for substitutions for this. But it must be a liquid sugar that you're using. Two tablespoons go in there. Oh, a pinch of salt. That's it. Easy peasy, man. A little bit of salt makes things taste a little sweeter. So, but you don't want to get yourself salty sorbet. So, I'm just going to take a pinch, a very conservative pinch, not a generous pinch, a very conservative pinch, and just sprinkle it in there. That's just going to cook for about 15 to 30 minutes. You're just going to kind of dissolve it and stir, 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 stir. I'm just going to clean up and I'll be back in a minute. And we're back. So if you're like me, you're a little impatient and you want to get things done. The cranberries that have cooked and they kind of split and they're open and I'm hoping you can see that. Still really, really hot. Can you see the steam coming off of that? That's way hot. And we're about to put this in a blender. So for safety's sake, we are gonna put a very small amount. Definitely not even half. And I'm gonna take the top, the center thing, out of the top. And you want to blend it until it's smooth. So you do want to jack it up. Such a pretty color. All right, that's good. So 
So I'm dividing it. So this is kind of a pain, but it's so worth it. You can also do this like a few days ahead of time. Cranberries are so good for you. They have this specific, it's like an anthocyanin, polyphenol kind of thing, tannin, like in a wine, that helps protect anybody prone to UTIs. And there's a lot of research out there, and it's mixed as to how effective it is. So the theory is, is that E. coli, which is like a bacteria that is most often causes UTIs in people, one of the properties of E. coli is that it attaches to the walls of the inside of the host. And so what the tannins of cranberries do kind of make it impossible for E. coli to attach. So it can't stay there and fester and actually become an infection. And so it is a good thing to keep on hand if you have somebody that you care for that is a high risk for urinary tract infections. You know, obviously drink a lot of water, but you know, it does tend to help protect them and can keep them off some antibiotics, which, you know, if you don't need to take them, you really shouldn't take them. Mm. You can kind of smell the Prosecco, it's very cool. So now I'm just gonna kind of work it through. I'm not pushing really hard. I'm just kind of more stirring the bottom because I don't want anything that doesn't belong in there to mess with it. Gorgeous. So now this is just gonna cool. We're gonna cool this probably overnight. See, and there's all the fiber that's left. Can you see that? That's what we don't want in it. And then all we have is this gorgeous Prosecco, lemony, cranberry, totally holiday gorgeousness that we're gonna stick in an ice cream maker and be done. See you later, alligator. Welcome back. So it's actually the next day because I let that chill in the fridge overnight. Bum, bum, bum. It's all nice and chilled. Looks gorgeous. You need a specific equipment, piece of equipment for this. And I just have your standard issue ice cream maker. I just took this out of the freezer. I have a chest freezer in the garage, so I keep it in a plastic bag so it stays clean. But I always have it in the freezer so I don't have to remember to freeze it ahead of time because I will forget. Pop this thing on. Turn it on. Voila. See, I stored this with a spout. Just pointing it out. If you've got something like this, you should do that. This one is from Pampered Chuck. I don't even know if we make that anymore. You're just gonna freeze it according to the ice cream maker's manufacturing directions. Cause it usually says like you only need to freeze it for 15 or 20 minutes or something like that. Cause if you go beyond the time, this component will start to melt and then you undo all the work that you've done. I'll be back with the finished product and we'll talk more. Okay. Look at how pretty this is. I'm so excited. A couple of things. So sorbet, if you make it wrong, you end up with rock hard. Something you can't scoop and you can't use. Look at that, isn't that pretty? A couple of things that I did. One, I used Prosecco. You need a certain amount of sugar, at least 25% sugar by weight, otherwise you can't get anything that's scoopable. But by adding the Prosecco can cut down on the amount of sugar that you use. The other trick that I use, corn syrup. Because it is a smaller molecule than even sugar is, it lowers the freezing point further. The last thing that I did was I also added salt and lemon, and the cranberries themselves have pectin in them. And that's a really big molecule, and that actually kind of gels, kind of like jam. It makes it give it a really creamy texture. There's actually a lot of method in my madness here. I cannot wait to try this. Because this was kind of a recipe I wrote just for this, because, you know. You can totally taste the Prosecco in here. Oh my God, it's so good. I can't wait for you to try this. 
I'm not kidding. Please make this. It's super easy. You saw me do it. I'm gonna go put this in the freezer right now before it melts. Freeze, freeze, freeze. Because it's amazing. What an amazing thing to have as a light dessert or a palate cleanser because Thanksgiving is probably just gonna be us this year. So this is a whole series that I'm gonna do. All kinds of things that you can make for dessert when it's kind of just gonna be just you guys. But you also want to try and make things that are kind of fun and special and good. I'm gonna share with you what I have, what my plan is, even how to make a turkey. Hey, you know, we're all doing this together. Try this, this is good for Christmas. This is just good. You're gonna love it. It's very, very elegant. Oh my God, dude, that is so good. I wanna go back and like dive into that. 